I'm Tim O'Brien. I'm a professor of astrophysics and associate director at the observatory, and I co-curate the science content. So I'm Teresa Anderson. I'm director of the Discovery Centre at Joshua Bank, and I co-curate the science content as well. <laughs> I came here when I was a school kid actually, so I, I was at a school in Rochdale, the, the other side of Manchester, and I think a lot of kids in the northwest uh, visit Jodra Bank and still do, um, so I can remember coming here and uh, I never imagined I would actually end up working here I suppose. Yeah, so the first time I came to Judge Bank, I was a student. It was my first week of studying physics in Manchester, some decades ago, I must say. Um, and I just remember thinking, wow. <laughs> and I think it's, uh, yeah, I didn't think I'd work here either. I mean, I wanted to be an astronaut, so working here is second best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, look at the night sky, I always feel a sense of awe and um, curiosity, what's out there. I think there must be life out there. I think most scientists do. I think um, when, when I look up at the night sky, I actually feel a sense of um, connection with all the uh. many generations of people in the past, because people will have looked at the night sky for millennia. Um, they may not have understood what it meant, but it's had a strong connection with people for the whole history of humanity. And I think that is still the case today. We can all look up and have that sense of wonder about um, about the universe. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it would be very surprising if there wasn't um, life out there somewhere, I think. Yeah. Uh, not that we have any evidence of it yet, but I think one day <laughs> soon we hopefully will. Yeah, so uh, we're both old enough to remember the landing because we were kids then. And I remember, you know, looking out at, uh, of the window, looking at the moon and hearing it on the radio because we were in a youth hostel and thinking, I can't see them. But then growing up, you know, our childhoods were both dominated by seeing astronauts walk on the moon, largely in black and white, and then uh, moon buggies and stuff. And I think we all thought we would be living out there by now. And so there's a sense of why aren't we? And I think these days, I'm really pleased that you know there's a new renaissance really of interest in space travel and getting out to Mars. I think that's mm. the interesting thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I was five when they landed on the moon, um, and I can't quite remember that first landing. I remember some of the later ones, yeah. uh, but one of my earliest memories is being uh, was at primary school in September of 1969, uh, dressed as an astronaut. So I had uh, I had cardboard yeah. boxes over my body and down my arms, <laughs> stuff wrapped in tin foil, lovingly by my mum, according to my older sister. Mm -hmm. um, so whether that rubbed off on me, I don't know. But I've, I was always inspired it's by. Could be uh, why you wear tin foil today. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I always, uh, yeah, sorry, put me off the top. Sorry! <laughs> so it's, for us it's a fantastic weekend that celebrates, you know, science, music, culture, creativity, having a good time, all at the same time. And then, um, you know, people say to us, but is it a science festival or is it a music festival? You can't really tell and it's kind of, that's the point. <laughs> basically mm. it's a big big celebration basically. yeah i mean i tried to, i was trying to sum it up in a few words recently and uh, and the words i came up with were celebratory beautiful informative and fun and i think yeah, if you can combine those things i think we've been you know that would be a success for us yeah, i think i think, I think, so. it, I think we are managing to do that yeah. mud aside mud included really. mm. yeah Mm. Kraftwerk. Yeah, I mean, Kraftwerk were a bit were a biggie, of course. I mean, Amazing. people, you know, we were being at, we were asked a few years ago about who would we, you know, who we'd like to have play at Blue Dot, and I remember saying, oh well, we we had the Flaming Lips, and then uh, we had we've had uh, New Order. It's like, oh, really, you know, we should really try and get Kraftwerk. We yeah. asked a few times, and we haven't we haven't managed to get them, but but yeah, it's, uh, Kraftwerk were were brilliant, weren't they? Yeah, yeah, and I think you know afterwards to bounce some of robots off the moon um, with them in the audience which is what you know what Tim did afterwards is just kind of mm. cherry on the cake yeah Oh, interesting. Think big. That's what I say. Um, so, so think, the thing about Blue Dot is it's it's about um, us all being nice to each other and being nice to the planet. And I think you know we've got a bit of a way to go on that. 
Um, and so, you know, it's just working towards all of that kind of, you know, building up people being uh, creative and kind to each other and also looking after the planet. And, you know, I think like everybody who, who works on the festival, we're all we're all pretty committed to being green, you know. Apparently we sell more vegan pies than meat pies here, you know, and I think that's just epitomises, you know, hmm. the approach of the people that, that come and the community that we've built. We just basically need to expand that around the world and then we'll all be fine, I think. Hmm. And we named, uh, we named the festival Blue Dot after, uh, after a yeah. famous uh, uh, piece of writing by Carl Sagan who was an American astronomer of the of the 1970s and 80s and he wrote this thing called Pale Blue Dot that was inspired by a, a photograph taken by the Voyager spacecraft where it flew out way way past sort of Jupiter and Saturn and it looked back and it took a photograph of the Earth from space yeah. and the Earth was just this tiny dot and he wrote this lovely piece about the fact that you know all of humanity and all the bad people and the good people and everybody you'd ever know we're all in this tiny speck sort of yeah. in the vast uh, cosmic darkness and and he sort of finished with that point he said you know it underlines uh, our responsibility uh, to both be kind to each other and to be kind to the planet this tiny dot sort of floating yeah. in space and I think that um, you know that combined with that celebration of creativity as uh, uh, of humans as a species is what is what a perfect planet would be for, for us I think. Uh, that's such a hard one. A tree, perhaps. Tree. Picture of a tree. No, a tree. <laughs> <laughs> An actual tree. Well, launch well, it into space. Well, you know, a living tree. It would be an amazing thing to send a living tree into space. Have you ever seen Silent Running? I haven't. Silent Running is a science fiction film where they have to take all the trees and put them in a spacecraft and keep them alive because of what we've done to the I planet. I think that's what I'd like to do. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Keep the trees alive. Keep the trees alive. Um, so I mean, I uh, I mean, just at the festival this weekend, but rather bizarrely, perhaps, uh, we did take a sample of uh, the robots from Kraftwerk with their permission, and we sent it into space as far as the moon, and we bounced it off the moon, and we caught the echo uh, with our telescope here. So so we have actually just been sending real things into space and bouncing them back off the moon. Uh, but I mean, in, in, I mean, just to take a contrary position on that. Um, we often think about the existence of extraterrestrials and we actually use this telescope here to try and pick up signals from extraterrestrials but the idea of sending them messages is quite controversial yeah. uh, and some people would argue about whether we should send messages maybe they'd be scared of what the extraterrestrials would do if they heard them and they came <laughs> to find us um, that's a rather negative view uh, but on the other side of it you could say well we have the power we have the technology we can send any messages into space we like yeah. um, and actually I think you know, you could say, why should it be up to us to decide what to send? And, you know, maybe as a, as a, as a species, we need to decide what it is together that we'd like to represent uh, for humanity. If we're going to send anything into space, it mm. should be a joint. It represents the whole of humanity, not just our individual yeah. um, thoughts. Discuss. Which is a